Hi, Dr. Goldberg here, continuing our Internal Medicine Infectious Disease Lecture Series. Today we're talking about lymphadenopathy, uh, especially the cervical lymphadenopathy. We generally uh, see this uh, uh, problem in the outpatient setting in our patients of all ages. So we need to have a differential diagnosis uh, available to you uh, as you uh, take care of these patients uh, as to what to think about, what testing to do, uh, that type of thing. So in terms of uh, causes of cervical lymphadenopathy or adenopathy or other areas, but especially in the neck, you should think about HIV infection, number one. Number two, you should think about uh, tuberculosis or atypical tuberculosis. Uh, uh, in the past, it's been called scrofulatium, um, but uh, definitely think about TB. A uh, third thing you want to think about is toxoplasmosis, especially if the patients are exposed to cats. And then speaking of cats, you should also think about cat scratch disease, which is related to Bartonella. Uh, but literally these people have uh, been exposed to cats who've scratched them on their arms, and they can develop uh, cervical lymphadenopathy. Uh, the fifth thing we think about, of course, is malignancy. Uh, lymphoma of the neck or angioblastic lymphoma can be aggressive, a lot of lymph nodes. Uh, Sixth thing is uh, mononucleosis, but these people usually have occipital lymphadenopathy uh, as well as lymphadenopathy uh, throughout their body with big spleen. Uh, people who have gum disease, sinus disease, scalp disease, uh, from psoriasis, whatever, uh, they are certainly going to have uh, enlarged lymph nodes uh, that can be tender uh, right, and, and bilateral. Uh, people with strep throat, certainly. Uh, if you have any, you know, pharyngitis for any other reason, mycoplasma, viral, will have lymphadenopathy. Um, think about Castleman's disease, which is a benign reactive lymphadenitis. I've seen that several times. Uh, and, of course, always think about the great masquerader, which is the syphilis. So workup's going to be basic, you know, CBC, CMP, sed rate, chest x-ray, sometimes a CT scan of the abdomen looking for more diffuse lymphadenopathy. You should check a PPD or a serum quantiferon gold assay, as well as toxoplasmosis titers, Bartonella titers, monospot, HIV testing, VDRL, that type of thing. Uh, I think a pearl for you is, you know, uh, getting a lymph node biopsy is appropriate. Uh, sometimes a needle aspirate isn't enough. I've, you know, in, in the past, uh, We've made a diagnosis of disease only taking the entire lymph node out. So if you see a lymph node that's, you know, more than a centimeter, certainly you got to monitor it and think about taking it out rather than just doing a needle aspirate. So these are some pearls for uh, lymphadenopathy. I uh, hope, uh, uh, hope that this helps just in terms of thinking about the disease, the disease, the different diseases that can cause it. Dr. Galbraith signing off.